Hey everybody, what's happening? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad with Premier Leather Crafters right here in Alabama. Um, I wasn't going to do a video this weekend because it is Easter weekend and I know people are out there shopping and buying eggs and coloring and boiling eggs and whatever have you, you know. But you guys always know me, hey, the grind never stops regardless of the holiday. Uh, Lori Grenier has a favorite saying that I always love to say, and I do believe that's true. A true entrepreneur will give up a 40-hour job just to work 80. You know, I mean, in their own business. I believe that that is true, very true. So right now I'm working for you guys and I'm passing on the leather tip of the day, which is called burnishing. Uh, I was sitting here working on a piece today, this custom uh, knife sheath. Um, and I've been seeing a lot of these uh, around the, the leather forums and different things like that. And it really caught my attention. And I really like the way they look. Uh, as opposed to the traditional uh, knife sheaths. Uh, these here, let me pull that back some. These are your traditional knife sheaths. And you guys know I hate metal in leather uh, because the leather, the we did another video where the, the, the metal and the rust starts to oxidize and then it promotes rust and then the leather starts to withdraw from that and it'll just make that snap. Later on, years down the road, that snap will have to be replaced. Uh, you know, so I don't really like using metal. But uh, sometimes you have some customers out there, the way that they want things, you have to put a snap or two in there. But um, even sometimes rivets, depending on the knife sheet. But anyway, today we're talking about burnishing and I was sitting here getting ready to burnish this and I was like, man, I, I've talked about burnishing, but I never actually showed you guys or told you guys um, what the purpose of burnishing is. One is burning the edges. You're literally burning the leather in order to merge two pieces together. If you ever made a holster or, or, or a knife sheath, uh, you know that even at your holster, you got these two pieces that are come together and then you have that seam or that line down the middle. A lot of young crafters or a lot of crafters who haven't been crafting that long, um, they would try to hide that seam. I mean, and it is very unattractive in a custom piece. It is the most unattractive thing aside from not lining up your stamps or your swivel knife running away. And to me, you just don't want to let that out the door as to represent your brand. So what a lot of crafters do, they'll come back and braid this or they'll lace this with latigo lace to cover up that seam or that opening where they took the two pieces and contact submitted them together. Uh, some crafters just don't even... Care. I mean, they'll just let it ride what it is. It's not coming apart. True, because they've contact cemented. They've already wax thread stitched it. But just to see that line there is very annoying for me. And I know it's annoying for a lot of the old school crafters out there because they can see that and they can pretty much judge and tell, base and tell how long you've been crafting. But great things are happening because now... Cowboy is going to share that knowledge with you right now about burnishing. And every crafter needs these two pieces in your toolbox. Now, this is your edge slicker. Traditional edge slicker, a round slicker. This one here is a little bit different because you have the different notches that are cut in here for different widths, widths of, um, of leather, that whatever the cut you're working with. And this one here, we're gonna. Cho I, mean, I chose to use this one because in a knife sheath, and especially the way that I'm putting this together, is that it has these two parts here. And what the burnishing principle is, we want to try to get rid of get rid of this line that's going down down the middle here. This is why we're going to burn these two pieces of leather together to make one. Now, is there an easier way to do that? Yes, it is. It is an easier way. It's also, you have to be very careful with using burnishing ink. 
Tandy doesn't even sell this stuff anymore. So now, can you get it from another craft or another leather store? Probably, maybe, whatever. This company here is called Solaris, and they're based out of Brownsville, Tennessee. And it is a wax-based cream, and it comes in black and brown. And now this stuff will hide that seam like nobody's business. But you still have to use your slicker in order to heat that wax up. And what it does, by it being a wax-based product, and you can use... Uh, uh, even just regular candle wax. Now, old school crafters, now talk about old school crafters. Old school crafters did this. And just to show you guys that I am under the, still under the old school rule, good old dungarees, denim. This is the best stuff in the world before the invention of the edge slicker. Good old dungaree material, leather. Uh, not leather, denim. Um, and I also use this as a buffing or polishing agent too. Now, you can you can go to your local thrift store, Salvation Army, what have you, any just old cheap pair of Wrangler dungarees. I like Wrangler because Wrangler denim is a lot stiffer than your traditional Levi's. Right behind Wrangler is your good old Rustlers. Now, if you can find you a pair of uh, traditional dungarees, and a lot of you older crafters out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say dungarees. Dungarees is the Generation 1 blue jean. Very first. And they called them dungarees. Um, the word, the... Um, the entomology of the word goes all the way back to way back when... Um, before the English settlers got to this country of the New World and they brought in dungarees. Um, that's when you started getting developed in belt loops and the belt started being created because even in your old Western days, they always wore suspenders. So the problem, and I'll get off into that in another history lesson though, but um, good old denim was the first phase of the edge slicker. And what I would do is just take regular water and we're gonna I'm gonna spray these edges down with regular water. Just regular water. And I'll take my denim material, my dungarees. If you can find dungarees, use those. But you can you get away with good old denim. And we're just gonna work this to heat cause that heat and that friction. This is where the concept of the term burnishing comes into effect. It's just the friction between the, the, the denim or your edge slicker. Uh oh, I'm sorry about that. Or your edge slicker and it's the heat. And what it's actually doing is melting the flesh of the leather together to form one piece. That is the hidden secret that old school crafters, a lot of old school crafters um, are not passing on. One, because just that simple little small thing about burnishing, that stands your work apart from a lot of crafters out there. Now, there are a lot of crafters out there that know about burnishing, but burnishing is tiring. Burnishing takes too long. Burnishing do this, or I'm wearing out my arm burnishing. But you guys know that by now you know me that your craftsmanship is in taking your time and those small little intricate details like that something as simple as burnishing you know it makes your work stand out i know my work from anybody else every crafter knows his own work and that's one way of doing it um and sometimes you don't have to braid in this particular case i cannot braid this knife sheet and this is my version or my idea concept of the cross draw quick pull knife sheath. And I'm seeing a lot of these on leather forums now. They're all in different shapes and designs and prints. <clears throat> but uh, this is my own personal one that I come up with. Um, so I can't braid all the way down here. So this is where my wax threading stitching is going to come into concept. Now I could braid all of this and then the braids are going to separate and go here, but that'll leave this piece plain looking. Uh, 
We don't want plain looking. We want to stand out. So, and the way to stand out is, is I'm going to burnish these ends. So once, uh, now, before you burnish, and let me drop this little tip on you. Before you burnish, you want to true up all of your edges, even on a holster. Even if you buy the holster kit, these things are made from a template. So over a period of time, when you use the same cutters and cutters and cutters, it may start, and you can fold this in half and see, but you still can tell that the holes are not always going to line up. So to line these holes up is going to put that edge, you see that right there? It's going to put that edge out of line. So uh, a lot of crafters have spent money on a belt sander. I don't suggest that you have to go out and spend that kind of bread on a belt sander to true up an edge or true up any piece. But I will recommend Harbor Freight. $9.99 Dremel tool. And I replaced that tip and that head with a good old round sanding wheel. And this works just as good as a $100 belt sander. So you don't have to go out there and get a DeWalt sander or even an off-brand Pro Tool uh, to true up an edge. And I think Pro Tools probably run about $79 for just a small belt sander. Then you got to mount it. And that thing requires a lot of juice to pull to burn burnish just those pieces. Now it's quick. It is quick. But then you got to buy belt sanders and all that belt, the sandpaper belt and all that stuff. Don't do that. Dremel Tool, Harbor Freight. Nine bucks, and it does it does the same thing because all you want to do is true these edges up enough to prepare you for burnishing. Now, the old school crafters use water. After you contact cement your piece together, be it a knife sheath or a holster or whatever, after you contact cement those, you come back, and then you can even really go old school and just take you just some sandpaper with your hand. You don't have to spend anything even on a dribble. And you can go and buy sandpaper from Wally World. And you can get five or six, seven sheets, maybe ten sheets in a pack for three dollars. And you just true just truing those edges up. That's all you're using. But to burnish, you have to have your edges true. That's another little small tidbit, nugget of information is what I call. Um, just to true those edges up, then you're gonna come back. Follow that up with water. After you use your edge rounder, always use your edge rounder and to take these, take your corners off here. And then you're gonna come back with water, spray your edges, and then we're just gonna put some good old work into it. And we're just gonna scrub these down. And you can see, we're just gonna take that and rub it, rub it, rub it. And I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna do some really rubbing. But you can tell from the heat, look at that. Let me see if you can see that gloss. When that starts to melt, it's going to give a shine to it. And it's going to start to pull these pieces together. Now, I wonder if you guys can see. There it is right there. You see that little glaze? Now, you can tell. See what this line is right here? Now, that's a fairly straight piece. You see that? But look at the line. How it starts to melt and pull these two together. How it goes back here. And we're just going to keep burnishing. And you can tell also, look how dark that is. That's burning, burnishing. That's it. Now, if you were lucky enough to find this, the burnishing waxing, get you a bottle. It comes in blue and black. You want to go old school traditional? You can buy a candle at Dollar General or Dollar Tree for a dollar. And you can rub that wax on there. And you just take the raw candle itself and rub that wax on there. And then you're still going to come back with your edge slicker. And you're going to heat that wax up until it bonds that seam together and melts and pulls that seam until it's gone. And you want to do that until you can't see it anymore. That's the great part about burnishing. All right, you guys, we're at our 14 and a half minute mark. I'm glad that you stopped in with me on this Easter weekend, uh, 2017. I hope this little bit of information gave you enough to where you can start to work and play around with burnishing. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a two-piece or a three-piece holster or knife sheath. 
Try it even on something simple as a bracelet, a cuff, or a wallet. I mean, a belt. Um, I burnish everything. Because, one, I like that finished store-bought look, and it's custom. Um, and you can play around with what fits and works best for you. Uh, I've said it before. i say it again. There is no one set in stone rule for leather crafters. It's what works best for you. I share and give you guys the information of what best works for me and what has been passed down from, from my uncle, my dad, down to me, and I pass it on to my children as well. So keep it old school, keep it nice, keep it clean, keep it professional, and just take your time, as in with everything, even the burnishing. You can't rush it. Rush work is terrible work, and it reflects in your work, and that drives your costs down. So, hey, hope this helped you guys. This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad, Premier Leather Crafters, right here. Don't forget to click the subscription button down below. Join my leather tribe. Uh, submit your email address. You can contact me, call me. I'm all on social media. Wherever you might can find me, hit me up, and I'll be glad, more than happy and glad to answer your questions. Peace, you guys. See you on the other side. There we go.